All right, let me update you on a few uh, prayer requests uh, before I pray uh, this evening. And of course, we'll receive our requests uh, after, the, after the message tonight. Um, but we are grateful to uh, report that uh, Alan is continuing to improve, Alan Taylor. So we praise the Lord for that and uh, continue to pray for him. It's certainly wonderful to see uh, Ben and the Wormels back in church. A great answer to prayer there. He's back in school today and evidently not completely exhausted or he had a good nap after school. So we're uh, still got a ways to go. Keep praying for Ben. We're, we're thankful for that. Also want to report to you that uh, Patty came through her surgery just fine today. As expected, she should uh, hopefully go home uh, tomorrow. So uh, remember, remember her in prayer if you if, if you would. And then, as we've been encouraging you, uh, let's pray for our brothers and sisters across the country whose churches are meeting under threat. Uh, I was made aware today that obviously California is kind of on the the uh, in our in our view right now because they're they're before us. But there's there's really about four or five states that. Are wrestling with these similar situations so I want to pray for our uh, brothers and sisters who who are uh, meeting uh, with fines uh, I saw that the one church there in California is being fined fifty thousand dollars a week which is crazy to us we understand that and yet they're still meeting they're by God's grace and God's supply they're going to continue to meet Sometimes we have to sacrifice for things we didn't expect we'd have to, don't we? Uh, and I think that uh, God will reward them for their faithfulness, and I trust that they'll get it back plus. But uh, nonetheless, there's no guarantee of that. So let's uh, remember to hold our brothers and sisters up in prayer, and let's not take lightly the blessing and the privileges that we have. We thank God uh, for them. I read an article today. Someone listed about seven different things of threats against churches, and he said, you might think this is from a, a dictator or a, a foreign a, a closed country. No, he listed he listed later every one of the things he had, he had gone through, threat of bulldozing your property and uh, people losing their jobs because they went to church because of a threat. To, all of it has happened in states here in the United States in the last few months, and so uh, we need to hold one another up in prayer, and obviously we want to continue to do our part to be to be healthy, but let's uh, let's remember uh, to be faithful to the Lord through this and pray that God would strengthen our brethren across the country. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you again for the privilege it's ours to gather tonight. We thank you for this freedom. We thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of, of these who have gathered tonight uh, in our assembly together here in your house. And Lord, for those that are joining us online, we pray that uh, your word would do its work in each of our hearts and lives. We pray that uh, each of us would be encouraged in the faith. Uh, as we uh, see some of these uh, negative uh, reports and have to uh, share them, these requests, Lord, we're thankful that we can share these requests and hold them up to you, that you are the faithful one. Uh, you have brought uh, many through much more difficult uh, times than what we're seeing today. So Lord, I pray that uh, you'd help us to be encouraged in the faith, help us to uh, be that which we should be, to be the testimony and the witness, and also, Lord, to know when to stand and how to stand uh, in a way that would be pleasing in your sight and honoring to your name. But Lord, we do thank you and praise you for an answered prayer with these health uh, needs and the improvement we're seeing with, with all three of the cases that I mentioned. We're grateful, Lord. We pray they continue to heal, they continue to recover, and, uh, and Lord, that they would return to better health than they were when they started. I just pray you'd strengthen and, and uh, lift them up. And then, Lord, we pray your continued hand of protection upon our church family at large. Lord, each, uh, each one of us, may you protect us from this virus, keep us healthy. May we be able to go forward in the faith and be able to uh, grow uh, by your grace in these uh, seemingly difficult days. None of this is a surprise to you. Help us to rest in thee, Lord. We pray that uh, you build our faith and strengthen our faith through this. And Lord, we thank you for that which you've done. You have built our faith and you've strengthened us. We pray you continue to do so. Provide, lead, guide, direct us, and Lord, give us the faith to follow you. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. All right, before Brother Jesse comes with our second congregational, let me announce a couple things uh, to you. Of course, uh, tonight's the last opportunity to sign up for the couples retreat, for a marriage couples retreat. And I hope that you'll uh, sign up for that and plan to be here. Sign up sheets on the bulletin board there in the hallway. And uh, we've got a good number of couples that will be coming. And I hope that you'll be among them. So if you haven't signed up yet, make sure you do so. Tonight's the deadline to get signed up. 
The cost is $50, but again, if uh, the cost is a hindrance, please let me know about that. I, I don't want that to be a hindrance to any uh, couple in the church. We want everyone uh, to be able to uh, to be here for that. It'll be Friday evening and then Saturday, September the 11th and 12th. Friday evening, Saturday morning, September 11th and 12th. The, the uh, Lexus uh, Hoddle Baby Shower will be Sunday, October the 4th at 4 o'clock here at the church at Sunday afternoon before the evening service. And she is registered on Amazon and a bunch of other places, and I've forgotten what they are, but we'll get that updated for the Sunday bulletin, all right? So if, if you're a mad shopper and gonna go shop right now, uh, good luck to you, do a great job with that. Two other update announcements, or three rather, three other update announcements about our uh, practices here as we go uh, forward in uh, taking steps back to whatever the new normal will be uh, post-COVID. I do believe we will get to a time where it is post-COVID, and we'll look back on this and uh, Brother Downs told our school kids the first week of school, he said, look, you're going to be able to tell your grandkids, look, when I was in school, we had to wear a mask in class every day. <laughs> We're going to be able to look back on COVID someday and say we lived through it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We can start tomorrow. Be fine with me. All right. And all of us, no doubt. But anyhow, uh, uh, the bus ministry, we plan to restart our bus ministry the Sunday after Labor Day. So that's just uh, about 10 days away now. Be in prayer about that if you would. And then also, uh, as more of our church family uh, continue to return, I want to encourage you. Uh, obviously, we're we're trying to sit every other row, and, and that can you know that can be adjusted as needed. If you got kids that you need to have need to have sit in front of you, I was a child once and understand what might have been required to keep me in line sometimes in church. So if you need to have your kids right in front of you, that that's fine. But if you'll sit with people, a new term or a newer term for me to have understood recently is people you are cohorting with throughout the week anyway, if there's people you're fellowshipping with or, or so on and so forth, if you'll sit with them, uh, you can sit obviously a little bit closer. You still want to do, do our part to be wise and practice good hygiene protocols. But if you'll help with that, that'll help free up space uh, here in the auditorium for our services. And uh, I'm grateful we're having issues with that again. We gotta, we're, although we're distancing, we're, we're trying to make sure we've got a spot for everyone. Uh, we'll be uh, adjusting our seating a little bit to allow for, for a few more seats and that will be helpful to that end. But just uh, keep that in mind as, as you do. Let me also encourage you, if, uh, if you get here a little bit before the service and find your spot, that will help, all right? I, I know that doesn't always work as planned and most of the times, you know, the dog is barking at the neighbor or whatever the case might be. You gotta solve a problem before you leave the house and, and whatnot. But if, if you can try to get here a few minutes early and, and kind of secure your spot, that would be that would help in that area. Another thing we're gonna begin doing this Sunday is receiving our offering like we normally would. How we're gonna do that is we'll have our ushers only hold the plate, the offering plate, so they won't be passing it down the aisle. They'll come to you and you can place your offering in the in the offering plate. You know the offering is a special uh, thing. It's part of our Part of our worship thing i hate to use the word thing but it's part of our worship and uh, we need to return to uh, that practice that time in the service where uh, the offertory is played or, and uh, we are worshiping the lord by giving our tithes and offerings the first fruits of all our increase and our mission giving and so on uh, we want to uh, begin again that practice and as i mentioned about bus ministry it's been six months since we've done done these things so it's almost hard for us to wrap our brain around that, isn't it? That it's been been that long. It just seems like uh, these weeks continue to pile up. So those are some updates about what we're doing in the, the short term. Uh, we do hope someday to have choir again, but that is not on the horizon uh, in the next uh, next few weeks. All right, so those are some updates for you. If you have any questions about those, you'll ask myself or one of the pastors or deacons afterwards. We'll try to clarify for you. All right, Brother uh, Jesse's going to come and lead us in another congregation. Please stand once again with me. So we go to hymn 393. There shall be showers of blessing. Hymn 393. Yeah.
This evening, Genesis chapter 4. It's good to see everyone here tonight. Good to see some guests here again and others we haven't seen in a while. Good to have everybody in church this evening. In chapter 3, we look at the failure, uh, the disobedience of Adam and Eve. And we also looked at the fact that there's forgiveness with God. And aren't you thankful that there is? Amen. There is forgiveness with the Lord because of the finished work of Christ at Calvary. We get to chapter 4. We have before us another first. Obviously, these first 10 or so chapters of Genesis lay out before, uh, before us many of the first. And in this chapter, we have what uh, I've entitled false religion. False religion. So if you'd stand with me, I want to read just the first three verses by way of introduction here. Genesis chapter 4, and notice with me verse 1. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Father, I pray you'd help us as we look into your word tonight. Lord, it's easy for us to identify radical false religion, but perhaps not so easy to see our wrongs in areas that you desire for us to change our mind and then change our practice by placing ourselves <laughs> under your authority, the authority of your word. So I pray you'd speak to each of our hearts this evening. I pray you'll guide and direct me, Lord, as I preach. And I pray your hand of blessing upon the service. We plead the blood of Christ upon the service. Lord, may the truth reign supreme in each heart and life here tonight. I pray, Lord, for those souls among us that have never repented of their sin and received Christ, that they would be saved. For those of us who do know you, may we find truth tonight that would <coughs> help us, that we would receive the truth and, and grow from it. I pray and ask these things in Jesus' worthy name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. If, if you're wrong, do you want to know? If you're wrong, do you want to know? Now, I've, I would say all of us would give a hearty amen until the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Until the confrontation comes, we go, wait a minute. Well, I may have been wrong, but it's because, and we would have a good excuse. Oh, wait a minute, I think it's a good reason, right? However that works, right? We have, we, no, we have a good excuse when we're wrong. We have a good reason when we're right. 
But if you're wrong, do you, do you want to know? If, if you were wrong, would you want someone to tell you the truth? Yeah. Even if the truth hurt. Amen. Now, I think that's where we find Cain here. And I, I think differently than a lot of people. I readily admit that. But I want to take this common <coughs> account... I want us to look at this from a little bit different angle than perhaps we normally would. Now, the, the staples of the fundamental truths of this passage I'll certainly bring out in the message. But I want us to think about this. Uh, one would think to this question, do you, if you were wrong, do you want to know? Would you want to know? Do, if, you, if you were believing something that wasn't true, would you want to, to know the truth? Uh, one would certainly think the overwhelming answer would be yes, absolutely. But I think, as much as I would agree that most people would say yes, history, world history, American history, and personal experience tell us otherwise. For example, the world at large did not want to be told that it was wrong about the evils being committed during the time of Adolf Hitler's genocide. I enjoy history. I, I'm one of those people that wish I had more time to invest in my study of history, but in my limited understanding of that time and my touring of some museums and what little I've read about it, this went on for a long time and the world just seemed to turn a blind eye to it. The world didn't want to know that truth. Now today we look back on it and we say, well, we handled it, everything is great, uh, we took care of Adolf Hitler. After the news had gotten out, the truth had come out, and still he was continuing his rampage and the slaughter of many, many, many thousands of innocent people. Many populations of the world today don't want to accept the truth about the evils of socialism and communism. Which is mind-boggling to those of us who have some understanding of what socialism and communism brings with it and what some of us understand and appreciate about uh, the freedoms and liberties we enjoy as uh, freedom-loving people, as Americans and other nations around the world enjoy some of these freedoms. But many people want to turn a blind eye to the ultimate abuse of the masses and demands of these atheistic and hopeless regimes. And my friend, that's exactly what they are. Socialism and communism cannot continue unless they squash God out of people's minds. Right. Let me further mention this because it is at the forefront of our knowledge now and is not e not difficult for us to see if we're willing to see the truth that you know socialism and communism are venues to enslave the masses right. not to balance the wealth That's right. now, let me say that again and repeat it because we're being uh, inundated with uh, fire hose level indoctrination to the opposite Socialism and communism are venues that serve to enslave the masses, not to free them. That's right. Let me give you a great and an obvious easy example. China is the largest slave owner in the world. I need not defend that statement. It's obvious to anyone that wants to look. Right. Right. Yet the world, the world, is allowing it to go on so we can keep purchasing cheap products. In large part, there are other reasons, and I, I am not here to tell you you should boycott any product made in China. I, like you, if I went through my house, would probably be shocked at the number of things. But for us to turn a blind eye to what is going on, and, and that's just one, there are many, many others, is it evident to the fact that Many of us say we want to know the truth. If I was wrong, I'd want to know the truth. I, I do want to know the truth. Yet we see that so many in the world turn a blind eye to these things. The focus of this text tonight is this. What about your faith? 
If your faith was misplaced, would you want to know it? If you were wrong about what you believed, would you want to know? Would you want someone to tell you the truth? Would you want someone to care enough to plead with God for his power and Holy Spirit enlightenment and illumination in your soul that you would understand the truth and believe? I think the overwhelming response for every child of God, for every recipient of the gospel of Jesus Christ has to be a resounding, absolutely. If I were on the other side of the gospel, I would want someone to care. Right. I'd want someone to share Amen. that truth. Some years ago, my wife was given a song, I believe, by the Lord, entitled, Until All I've Heard. It's a mission-themed song, and I've asked her and Jenna to sing that for us tonight. And then we'll get into the heart of the message. Back now in our text in Genesis chapter 4, as we consider that fact that people need to hear the truth, not just hear it, but they need to receive it. I want us to look at this 
account of Cain and the first record of false religion in the Bible. And I want us to consider, first of all, let me read for you again verse 3. In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. The account of Cain and Abel is a story, is a tragedy of false religion. These two men grew up in the same home. We could make an application today. They grew up in the same home. They grew up in the same church. I know this is before the dispensation of the church, but y'all with me here? Right. You got it? They grew up in, in the same surroundings, hearing the same truth, uh, being uh, taught the same uh, things about God and the practice of their faith. And they grew up understanding what mom and dad had done, what they enjoyed in fellowship with God before they sinned. And then the consequence of their sin, how God had, had shed blood there in the, the Garden of Eden and provided coats for them. That shed blood was a picture of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ that was to come. Adam and Eve would have taught these boys about sin and about the Savior. Both of them would have heard the same truth. Both of them had the same opportunities. They weren't the same boys. They were different. All of us are different. Right. They both were agricultural. One was uh, more toward uh, crop farming, the other toward animals. Each of them had the same opportunities. Each of them observed the faith of Adam and Eve. Yet, it's obvious from this account, and I will substantiate this claim, that one of them, Cain, thought he was smarter than the family. One of them thought he had a better way of worshiping God than he had been taught. As most young people do in their process of their life and developing their independence, especially young men, we kind of have an idea that we've got to figure out a new way of reinventing the wheel. And our wheel is going to be better than everybody else's. The king was uh, bent like that, obviously, and he, he had figured out a better way, a, a, a better way because he was wiser, he was more sophisticated, he figured out some things that the rest of this old-fashioned family members just couldn't understand. You say, Pastor, you think all those thoughts went through, through Cain's mind? I don't know what thoughts went through Cain's mind, but I know that in the spirit of Cain, a lot of those thoughts go through our minds. We think that we know a better way. Listen, friend, there's no better way than the Bible way. Amen. Right. There's no better way of redemption. The only way of redemption is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's no better way of practicing our faith and growing by grace in, in, our, in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ than what the Word of God tells us and the Spirit yeah. of God leads us. Amen. And by the way, He never leads us in opposition to His book. That's right. Think about this. I want you to think about the offering of Cain. His offering was expensive. The offering of Cain was not that he was trying to, to cheat God out of some wealth so he would be better off. Now, there are a lot of believers, so-called believers, who try to cheat God. You talk about a nonsensical practice. That's right. <laughs> you know, I don't believe God runs, walks around with a great big stick waiting to knock me upside the head. But I fear God enough to realize that my heart keeps ticking because he lets it. That's right. I respect God. The people who think they're going to pull one over on God. One has to wonder if you, if you really are a child of God. You think you're going to cheat God. Will a man rob God? 
rhetorical question that God asks, you can't do it. We need to honor the Lord. But I, I want us to understand that Cain's offering was not some kind of a cheapskate option. Most scholars think, and I tend to agree, that his offering was probably, listen to this, much more valuable in monetary value. If, if, I mean, it didn't trade, you know, it wasn't uh, dollars then or whatever the... Uh, it wasn't shekels they were trading at, at this time, but his offering was probably of much more price. It cost him much more than Abel's lamb. You see, it's not about the price we pay. It's about obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Obedience to God. False religion, friend, is costly. Think about the price now of false religion. Think about many of the isms that are out there. You think about Catholicism and Islamism and polytheism and Hinduism and uh, humanism and all of the other uh, beliefs and uh, false religions that are out there. And I, I preached a, sermon, a series of uh, messages on the isms uh, some time ago. The, the price now that is paid for those who believe in false religion is a great price. They're missing the mark. They're, they're wasting their years. That's right. Believing lies. Would you agree with me that Cain wasted his life? All of us would agree with that. Yes, just nod your head up and down. You don't have to scream, hey man, you know, like they do down south. But, you know, are you with me? Cain wasted his life. Folks, religion will cost you now. False religion also not only has a price now, it has a great price later. Eternity separated from God. I don't like to think about the subject or the reality of hell and the lake of fire. False religion will cost you for eternity. Right. That's why the burden to get the gospel uh, to those that have never heard. Imagine you've never heard the gospel. I think there are a lot of people that occupy church chairs and pews, good churches like this one, that need to take a step back and make sure they have heard the gospel. That's right. And heeded the gospel. The price, not only now, but also later in eternity, separated from God. I think his offering was expensive. I want to say something else about Cain's offering. His offering was anti-Christ. It was against the sacrifice that Christ would make at Calvary. Right. Cain's offering was against God's way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. His offering was anti-Christ. It looked good. It looked better. It was more palatable. By the way, the world's religions and the world's way and the, the uh, watered-down uh, milk toast uh, religions or, or so-called evangelicalism that's going on today would appear to be more palatable. Listen, if you've got to act like the world in order to reach the world, you're doing it wrong. I'm not saying we need to be obnoxious and rude and difficult, but the truth is going to offend. Cain's religion was more palatable. I'm not saying, you know, look, you know me. I don't punch people in the face with the gospel. But we need to proclaim it loudly yeah. and boldly. That's right. Jesus is the only way. There's no other way. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done according to his mercy that he saves us. His offering was anti-Christ. Even though it looked good and it looked better, it was not. It was without innocent life being taken. It was without blood and death. You see, it was against the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary that was to come. 
the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary would be the taking of innocent life. That's right. The sacrifice at Calvary would be with the shedding of innocent blood. That's right. The sacrifice at Calvary would require death. Right. So Cain's offering, his false religion, was anti-Christ. It was against the sacrifice that Christ would make. You see, the Old Testament saints were saved by faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. His death and his burial and his resurrection that would take place someday. Right. You and I are saved today and looking back at the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ that has taken place. The Old Testament saints were saved by faith. By the grace of God. Amen. You and I are saved today. If you're saved, it's by faith. Because of the grace of God. Amen. Jesus said, or, or in, in verse, uh, 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 pardon me, let me back up and make this statement. Old Testament saints were saved by faith in the gospel that would be completed in the future, and we are saved today by faith in the gospel that is complete. Jesus Christ, last words, he said, he said uh, in John 19, 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He had completed the sacrifice. All those Old Testament saints of old were looking forward to him completing that task. We today look back and are grateful that he completed his task. Right. His hour had come and he had finished his task. Sin, false religion, kills. James 1 and verse 15, And when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth for death. Cain's offering was not only expensive, it was also anti-Christ. I want you to think about something else. His offering was in the spirit of anti-Christ. What does that mean? Cain's spirit was one of self-will and self-righteousness, and I know more than anybody else. I'm, I'm smarter than you are. I would suppose, and this is just supposition on my part, I readily admit that, but I'll bet Cain could win any argument he started. I'm sure that when Cain entered the tent, he was the smartest person in the tent. Well, no people like that. Perhaps we are that person. Pride goeth before destruction, the Holy Spirit before a fall for me. Cain was a man of pride. Right. In the spirit of Antichrist, 1 John 4 and verse 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of, a, of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. The offering of Cain. You know, you read these next two verses, and we're reminded of the grace, the mercy, the long-suffering, the compassion and the love of God. Notice with me again, verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrong? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire. Thou shalt rule over him. The offer to Cain. The battle between good and evil certainly has not ceased. And we looked at that uh, a couple messages ago in, in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, it hasn't ceased since the moment Adam and Eve chose to disobey the word of God. They sinned and, and the longest battle in, uh, known to man uh, has, has been going on since. It's a costless war that's ever, ever been uh, waged. But Christ in his matchless love and grace offers redemption if we'll humbly repent and receive him. I believe Cain had the opportunity to repent of his false religion and, and turn to God and come the right way, come by the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Cain could have come back the right way. God would have forgiven him. And who knows what would have come of Abel? Who knows what would have been of Cain? Cain, you can come. But you've got to come by way of the cross. You have the opportunity to repent. But 
Cain. But God was telling him here, Cain, if you reject the right way, sin lieth at the door. Sin lieth at the door. In other words, uh, we can say it this way, sin is ready to pounce. If you're not willing to come by the way of, of Christ, look, Christ would take care of that sin that's lying at the door if you trust him. Christ would uh, address that sin. He'd, he'd uh, uh, cast it into the deepest sea as far as the east is from the west if you come by faith, by, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, friend, you're condemned already if you're outside of Christ. Sin lieth at the door. Cain, if you won't get right, sin lieth at the door. Sin is ready to pounce, and we can't help but think of the illustration there of Satan who walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Most of us think we can handle our sin. While at the same time, we shake our heads about those who are ensnared with theirs. Interesting, our perspective of sin, isn't it? I can't believe they would do that. Well, then the Holy Spirit strikes us because he's, he's gracious like that. He convicts us. Well, what about this sin? Oh, well, you know, I got it under control. But their sin. No, sin is ready to pounce. Sin will always take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay. And it will cost you far, far more, friend, than you want to pay. If you don't turn to Christ, it'll cost you everything. That's right. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Kings of the earth set themselves to break their bands asunder. Later in Psalm 2, it says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Right. Who do you think you are? But even in that psalm of God uh, declaring great judgment on those who refuse God, at the very end, it says, what does he say? In his love and mercy and long suffering and grace, kiss the son while he may be found. Amen. Receive the son. Receive the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary. The offer to Cain is the same offer to you and to me. Come to Christ today. Come to Christ without delay. Proverbs 23 and verse 23, the Bible says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The offer to Cain was, look, I know you failed. I know you've sinned. I know you've done wrong against me. Listen, Cain, if you'll turn to me, if you'll come my way, if you'll buy the truth, I'll forgive you. I'll receive you. I'll be a father. Most Christians who've received the gospel and been saved for a while say, yeah, that's absolutely right. I don't understand how Cain could possibly be that way. Yet God, by his grace and mercy, keeps circling back around to that compartment in our heart, in our life, that sin, that besetting sin, that area we're unwilling to surrender. God keeps circling back. Hey, I'll I'll forgive you if you, if you repent of that. Right. God is so gracious and kind Amen. and loving. Amen. People who declare God is a mean, grumpy, vengeful, irate, supreme being don't understand the God I know. God's been mighty good to me. God's been good. The offer to Cain, repent, and I'll forgive you. But I want us to see thirdly tonight the offense of Cain. Notice with me verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. We'll never know what that conversation included. But I want us to think about a couple things here. I would suppose that this was one of those debates that Cain could not win because the Spirit of God wouldn't let him win it. Because his brother stood in truth and faith. I would suppose that Cain was trying to convince Abel, come my way. I would also suppose that Abel said, hey, 
I'd be willing to give you a lamb for your sacrifice, king. I love you. You're my brother. I, I'll give you a lamb so you can take it for your sacrifice. Wasn't good enough for Cain. We see here the offense of Cain, and I want us to see a couple thoughts here. Sin is never satisfied alone. Sin is never satisfied alone. It is a false claim. This claim is a false claim. I'll believe what I want to believe, and you can believe what you want to believe, and we'll just leave each other alone. Please tell me when and where that has ever happened. One of the things that will rile me quicker than anything is when someone who believes a false doctrine starts pursuing one of the people I'm privileged to pastor. That's right. I get riled up in a hurry. Amen. Stay away from my sheep. I know you belong to the Lord, but you understand what I'm saying. I get frustrated in a hurry. Take it like this, parents. You understand what, what your attitude is towards someone you believe is trying to uh, indoctrinate your kids or bring them harm, do harm to them. You get riled up in a hurry. Your protective uh, uh, <laughs> adrenaline just comes out. Sin is never satisfied alone. It wasn't true with Cain, and it's not true today. Cain could not leave Abel to his faith. Cain could not leave Abel to continue practicing his faith. Cain, Abel, you can't keep practicing your faith your way. We've got to do it my way. No, he had to eliminate Abel's conscience-burning testimony in Cain's presence. He, Cain couldn't let it go. He couldn't let it go. He had to eliminate that, the fact that, that Abel was worshiping the Lord the right way. He couldn't understand Abel, and therefore he had to eliminate Abel. He had to really, this is probably where we get the saying, slay the messenger. One of many instances of that in the Bible. Sin is never satisfied alone. Isn't that interesting? People get involved in sin, they want to share it with everybody else. Man, that's gross, that's disgusting. Stay away from me, I don't want to hear that. You know, the, uh, the filth talk would stop if people stand up to it. That's right. I readily admit I have an advantage over most people. People come in talking foul mouth like sailors. By the way, foul mouth talk is still sailor talk. Pardon, my pardon and apologies to all you Navy, Navy folk, but you understand, even the Navy folk understand exactly what I'm talking about. They're honest. I have an advantage. We get going to conversation, and someone starts yapping filthy, wicked stuff. I say, you know, I'm the pastor of Bethel Baptist Church. Oh, great. It's amazing how the conversation gets cleaned up. I have an advantage. I do. I, I readily admit that. And before that, I was able to say, hey, I'm a pastor's kid. Oh, whoa. Back off. I mean, you know, young years, he, he's, he's not heard this stuff. That's all right. Take what you get. Listen, find a good excuse to stand up for the truth. Is there anything wrong with saying, hey, you know what? Um, I, I know I'm not perfect, but I'm a Christian, and that, that language really offends me. Would, would right. you mind if you didn't yeah. use that language around me? Would, would that be all right? And you know what? If they cuss you out, then be on your way. Well, Pastor, I might lose the big negotiated business deal. I might get in trouble. Let it go. That's right. I think God's going to reward those churches in California that are standing for the truth and assembling as God's people. Right. I think God can take care of your business deals. Amen. To stand right. for truth. Again, we need to do so humbly. We need to do so respectfully. Look <laughs> at the life of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, for examples. You even look at the lives of the apostles in the New Testament. If you, if you read the New Testament, you see what they said. We ought to obey God rather than man. Look, they, they were sub, uh, submitted to the government until the government said you can't worship Jesus, you, you can't preach Jesus. I'm sorry if we have a higher authority. You can stand for truth. You can stand for right. Again, you don't have to be obnoxious about it. Right. I'll tell, tell you something else. 
If you're going to act like them four days out of the week, don't expect them to comply with your goody two shoes uh, godliness one day of the week. If you're going to be in on their dirty jokes uh, four out of the five days at lunch, then don't expect that they're going to respect you on that one day when you decide no. If you're going to make a decision to stand for Christ, make the decision and stand. Amen. And you'll be tried, you'll be tested. God's faithful. Trust Him. Amen. Sin is never satisfied alone. By the way, the Lord just put this in my mind too. Some of you Christian school kids need to take a stand in your Christian school. You get away from the staff and you get off in a corner and you pull out your device or you get in a the, uh, the bathroom or you get off uh, on, on uh, the telephone or on your messaging devices you start talking about stuff that is off color and dirty and wicked it's just as sinful as a water cooler talk at your mom or dad's office place That's right. I would say to you it's worse bringing that filth into a place that uh, is designed to protect you from the evils of this world from sin sin is not satisfied alone stay away from it Sin is, in this offense of Cain, we see not only that sin is not satisfied alone, but sin is a deceitful destroyer. A deceitful destroyer. How, how did Cain and Abel end up in this place where, where Cain murdered him? Now, Cain was angry. He was mad at God, and he took it out on Abel. I don't know what, under what pretense he brought, brought, got Abel to meet with him in this location. Let's go have a little chat. Let's get together and, and talk about this. Listen, there's nothing to talk about when you're stating truth. Discussion is over. We state the truth and stand for the truth. This is a debate mentality going on today. Look, it's okay in a political arena. That's part of politics. It doesn't belong. When we're not debating the, word, the truths of God's word. We stand for the truth. I'll do my best to help you understand the truth. I'm not here to argue with you about the truth that God has revealed in his word. Amen. It's the truth. It is where right. we stand. We stand right. upon this book. Amen. Stand on his promises. His promises are sure. We need to stand again for the truth of God's word. He said, let's uh, get together and talk. That wasn't his, his desire at all. He no doubt lied to Abel. Notice what the Bible says here. Keep reading. Look at verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. You talk about an arrogant, pompous, prideful man. He lied to God. He lied to God. He, he tried to lie to, to God Almighty, the omnipotent one, the all-powerful one. He tried to lie to God. He had lied to Abel. He tried to lie to God. Sin is a deceitful destroyer. He slew his own brother. He took his own brother's life. He murdered his brother. The denier, and by the way, we know the rest of the story, but let, let, I've got to share this because this this is where most people live that deny the truth of the word of God. Verse 10, he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. By the way, the shedding of innocent blood does not go unnoticed by God. That's right. Abortion is murder. Yeah. Amen. You can be forgiven. You've had an abortion. I'm thankful for the grace and mercy of God. But we need not continue to allow it to go on in our country and expect that God's going to turn a blind eye to it. Right. Verse 11, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy, from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not, not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, now he just lied to him a few minutes ago. My punishment, listen, I'm going to read this with emphasis. I think probably the way Cain read it. I, maybe he said it in anger. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Can you imagine the audacity of this man? Lord, you're being too hard on me. Now, if you or I were God, what would we have said? You just murdered your brother! God didn't say that. Cain knew it. God knew it. Abel was with the Lord. Right. I, I just had this thought. You know, Abel was the first one to get to heaven. Isn't that a blessing? He's been there longer than any other 
soul. Yeah, God's good. What's the worst that can happen to you for standing for truth? Get to go see Jesus. Amen. The denier of Christ, the rejecter of the gospel of Jesus Christ, believes that he or she is right and is in charge of their life. They feel, fail to see that they are but a tool in the hands of the wicked one. Satan is a deceitful. He is a liar. He is a murderer. John, 1 John 3 and verse 12, the Bible says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and where, wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Cain was angry. Cain knew that his works were evil, and that Abel's were righteous, and he just couldn't stand it. He was, Cain was, of that wicked one. Bible says in John 8 44 you have your father the devil the lust of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him where when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it deception anger are tools in Satan's arsenal don't fall prey to his sinful tools you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 1 and verse 5 that a wise man will hear and will increase learning. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. If you were wrong, if you are wrong, do you want to know? A wise man will hear and will increase learning. If you were wrong, would you want someone to tell you the truth? You know, I think for the most part, most of us would say yes. That might be hard. We might have to swallow some pride and it'd be difficult. I think also that most of us would probably recall some people in our lives that we're grateful for that availed themselves to the Lord and asked the Lord to fill them with the Spirit and to communicate to us and reach us with the truth of the gospel the truth of the word of God to change our, our understanding, our thinking, our reasoning about things. We're grateful for those people in our lives that cared enough to bring us along and grow us in the truth. Yeah. May I share something with you? And I, I hope you've gotten this from the message tonight, just as the song portrayed. Those people in those dark places people we could imagine have never heard the gospel. I believe God reveals himself to, through creation, but at the same time, they, their understanding is darkened. I can say it like this, they don't know what they don't know. They need someone to share the truth with them. Right. Listen, everyone you interact with is not your enemy. Just because someone doesn't understand the truth the way you do, look, God's placed you in their life so you can help bring them to an understanding of the truth. Right. Ask God to help you bring people along into the truth. We're thankful for people who, who brought us along, aren't we? And that's varying degrees and levels. I understand that. And there's no doubt. Look, I'm, I am not a novice. I'm not real old, but I'm not a novice. I'm, there's people in here that are that are frustrated that anybody would share the truth with them because they're so wrapped up in their own rebellion. They think they're they're smarter than anybody else. They they have the spirit of Cain about them. I, I get there's people in here like that. Well, for the most part, I'm talking to people tonight, a Wednesday night crowd. You're grateful somebody shared the truth with you. Right. And sometimes it took someone. <laughs> wake up. And other times it took someone. Hey. I talk to you about something. And all the levels in between. Aren't you thankful God knows exactly what we need? And God knows how to get our attention. God wants to use you. God wants to use me to help get people's attention. Ask God to fill you and use you to do just that. If you were wrong, would you want to know? Father, I pray you'd help us. Help us, Lord, to allow 
your word. And you, God, the Holy Spirit, to search our hearts, our intents, our ways, our attitudes, our spirit. Lord, if you'd identify wicked ways in us, you'd reveal that truth to us, I pray we yield to you tonight. Lord, if there are any among us tonight that have never repented of their sin, personally received Christ as their Savior, Lord, I pray they'd come and be saved tonight. It's a burdensome thing for me to consider that people sit under the sound of preaching of your word week in and week out, but never personally turn from their sin and receive Christ. Lord, if there are those among us tonight in such a case, I pray they'd come and be saved. Holy Spirit, by your grace and mercy, convict and convince of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and give faith, faith to be saved, to believe the gospel tonight. To those of us who are saved, Lord, help us to be instruments in thy hands, used of you to share the truth with others. People need the truth. Give us wisdom in how to share it with others. I pray and ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let's stand together. Andrea is going to play.